All right, let's do an Eric Perkins style video. <clears throat> Cardinal coffee. Uh, if you know, you know. All right, I am turning into the job. We are going to do footings. And this could not be an easier job to get started with. As a crew, we've never done this. I've done it many, many, many times. So this is an awesome one to learn. <laughs> Giddy up. Okay, so we are on site. I mean, literally, it's a 10 minute drive. Well, 10 minutes when I got up. Uh, and then it was a minute longer when we actually left. So it means everybody else is out and about. You can see it's a nice flat hole. There are no step downs here. It's just a two foot stem wall on what, like seven or eight inch footings. Generally, they end up being eight at the deepest. Let's see, at the shallowest. I think this one actually says 15 by seven because of the engineering, but you know, the dirt grade's never perfect. So such is life. Um, so the garage will be over there. And then I'm standing in the main living area. This will be that big rake wall. And so we'll have boom truck access. I don't really want to lift it with a forklift. Kyle and I have done this house four times. Two with a crane, two without a crane, um, due to access. This one, we, we do have access with the forklift. I just don't like it. And if we set up a bunch of walls, then I can bring the crane out and really save some money. Then they have three guys, right, um, that can get out and move stuff around, and then a crane operator, as opposed to like one or two people and a forklift, so. All right, so step one is to measure the hole. You always want to verify that it is cut correctly. I cannot tell you how many times I've shown up and it was not cut correctly. Then we set up the laser so that we can aim for pins 90 degrees to each other. That's just gonna mean a whole lot less moving as we go. Okay, so now that we've measured the hole, we're using the Stabila LA-180. I don't know, that sun is just beautiful this morning. And we're quickly, so what we've done is where the laser dot drops, we used our longest run, it's like 60 something feet, set a stake about a foot off the bank so that we have room to work, and then they just find it on that end. We used to come through here, do the math, pull out some, I think we just kept a bunch of 300 foot tapes. So we'd stretch one across the back, one here on the left, and then the diagonal. Setting up the laser is much quicker, and we use this laser for all kinds of things, squaring up. So we're gonna square up footings, square up walls, square up the floor. It's great for stepped footings, etc. Anyway, back to this. I like to use two by sixes for my footing boards. I use them one time, and then we're gonna use them up throughout the framing of the house. I screw them together with the Simpson Strong Tie framing screws because they're stronger than 16 duplex. They're easier to pull, especially if we get some blue tape on them in the corners. And they just hold better. Footings is hard work. I don't like it. In fact, I've said this in previous videos, we have not done a footing. This is the first time, by the way, that we've done a footing as a crew. I have not done a footing for a year and a half. And now I remember why I hate footing so much. I'm too old for this. And there's a lot of you out there that can empathize, right? We get to a point. See, the thing about footings is every single thing you do, you are bent over. And that is just physically hard. On this job, my, my responsibility really was to teach Kyle and Gage how we set up footings. It's not difficult, but there is an order of operations. Like for example, right where Gage is at there in the foreground, well now where the both of them are at, those are called spreader cleats. So they hold our panel or our uh, forms exactly the width that we want. In this case, it's 16 inches. Uh, well, technically it was 15 on the engineering, but we can't get clips 15, so we get them 16. So those are spreader cleats. We put a bare minimum in until after everything is straight. Otherwise they just get in the way and we still need to get rebar in. One of the things that experience has taught me is that you can do the math for the outside leg and the inside leg, but because of the small amount of slop in those cleats, your inside measurement will always be off a little bit. So see what they're doing is they put the cleat on first and then they measure to it. It's one of those little things that it'll lie to you. And then you sit there scratching your head like, oh my goodness, what did we get wrong? Really nothing. It's just, it's the imperfections of the cleats. Now across the front of the garage where we're at here, the engineer wants 24 inch wide footings with three sticks of rebar, 12 inches deep. Okay, so the skeleton is essentially there. We have the front of the garage we've left loose. We need to square it up and then pull parallel both ways. Get everything staked in and we'll basically finish that last. I'll send up the drone for B-roll so you can see it. So here's what we're doing. That's the Stabila LA-180. 
it shoots beams that way. So there's your 180 degrees. And then we're gonna go square here. So what I've done is, let's see if you can see that. There's the laser dot. And then what they're gonna do is I'm gonna adjust to them. Okay, so what Kyle's doing is he's turning it into full auto mode. He is on the inside of the form. You can kind of see how that's working there. Then on this end, it's just going to adjust itself to that, um, to the receiver. Nice. This video is 23 seconds and it already found it. So now there is a straight line. And then we're going to take that detector over here. We're going to move that corner over, stake it in. And then at that point, it's just string lining straight and straight and starting to pull parallels and parallels. So how close are we to start? Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're going to have to knock her over. Wow. It ain't out your way. I would just, yeah. We're perfectionists. We got it. Their uh, perfectionism is not allowed on my job sites. Yep. See you guys. <laughs> Enjoy your life. You'll never make money as a perfectionist. I know. True. <laughs> I've learned that. <laughs> so that original stake, we just aimed for that, and you could see we didn't even really have to move. Normally it's not that close. Normally it'd be like an inch. But now we're going to drive stakes roughly six inches from each corner, and then we will get out the string lines and straighten this guy, string lines and straighten that guy, and then it's parallel and parallel. Nice work. I feel I must defend my perfectionist comment. So here goes. I don't want to work with perfectionists. I think that's ridiculous. Look at us, we're in the dirt. We're working with imperfect forms. We're about to raise it to grade, et cetera, et cetera. That eighth of an inch that they kicked the form, it was irrelevant. We picked an arbitrary point to begin with. The point is, is that we want our forms square. Now, we want to streamline the longest run. So that's the back and that's the side there on the right. We're going to pull that over and we're going to stake it in on each side of the forms about every four feet. I think in this case, we were a little short on stakes. We didn't bring enough from the shop. So it was more like every six or eight feet. And that is plenty good enough for what we're doing. Here's essentially the house plan, three car garage, primary bedroom and bathrooms here. This is the great room, um, powder room, bathroom, kind of a nook. It's the uh, 150 project, if you were to go look at it. So anyway, it'll all make more sense as we go. On that back jog, then we can go ahead and just use the calculator. It's a six foot jog, so we measure over six feet, calculate the diagonal. You can notice from the drone, right? This is why we pull parallels. That wall needed to move quite a bit. That's what we're doing now. Now that we have the parallels from the back coming forward and from the side, you know, going east, west, now we can stake in all of the corners, and once the corners are locked in, then we'll either eyeball or string line each of these sections and stake them in. What I've learned is right there in the front, that spot always lies to us because of the cleats. So let's just get it staked in to where the outside corners are correct, and then we'll just measure it. In this case, we're measuring the entire building to the very far end of the three-car garage. Once that's staked in, then we can come across the front of the garage. Everything comes down to order of operation. Now, I would like you to do me a big favor again. Please post in the comments what method you use. You can see that what we do is we dig the entire hole flat, unless we need step downs, and we form that. That's gonna get backfilled later in the garage, and then we're gonna have a crawl space. Those, by the way, are strip footings instead of pier pads in the middle of the floor system, so those will get pony walls. Great place to use up your footing boards, by the way. Where you build or live, what is the common foundation system? I know sometimes it's ICF, sometimes it's what we're using, sometimes it's, you know, whatever. But I'm just curious what you do where you live. We're going to get into actually raising this to grade, how we do that, tying all of the steel. You're looking at a point load there on the right that's going to catch a beam. And we're going to go ahead and place the concrete. And this is what the main floor plan looks like over the footings. Now, if you look real close, you'll see I did a terrible job warping the screenshot in Photoshop, like right on the bottom left. That wall's not straight. <laughs> anyway, it's close enough. I promise you those walls are straight. On the right in the garage, you can see right where those buckets are at. That's right where the column used to go, but we engineered that out of there. 
There's the basic floor plan. Again, the primary bedroom there on the lower left where Kyle is just laying there. That is it for video number one. If you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate those of you that watch the videos. This whole thing is about education. And I know I've said this before many times, it also keeps it kind of fun for me. So anyway, um, we are always open to constructive criticism. If you're a troll, just try being a nice troll. You know, when you come out from underneath the bridge, just, um, just be nice about it. But anyway, that is it for video number one. We will see you all in the next video. We're gonna just follow this thing through in stages. Next video is gonna cover raising it to grade, tying rebar, and then we're gonna place the concrete.